On today's show, we settle into the sauna lifestyle, the story and history of this Finnish tradition built with strong Minnesota ties. Lumberjack sport lands in local watering holes. Test your aim. A teaspoon of salt. And we get wild in the kitchen working on a venison dish with a slight Italian twist. Minnesota Bound, presented by Kinetical Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first today, we heat things up with a little bit of Minnesota history. It's a story about saunas, which have quite a tie to our state. The beauty of a Minnesota winter, 30 below, no clouds. You can see all the stars. You can take a sauna. You can stand outside in your wool socks with no clothes and feel warm. And people all the time are like, Minnesota's winters are so bold, they're so cold. Well, sauna is a tool. You know, it was a tool even back in Finland. The word sauna is of Finnish origin. In fact, it's the only Finnish word used in everyday English. But the act of taking a sauna and the reasons for doing so evolved over time. Sauna is thought to originate somewhere in Northern Europe, but became particularly essential in Finnish culture. It was so necessary that early Finnish immigrants brought it with them to the United States. The oldest sauna in the Great Lakes region can be found right here in Kokato, Minnesota. Because of the Homestead Act, there was three families that came from Finland. They built their houses on the corners so they could be together. And that included building a sauna. They were very clean people, very cleanly people, because it was used not only for bathing for the sauna, but it was used for a laundry room. It was used as a medical area. It was the cleanliest place on the farm because it was heated to such high temperatures that no bacteria or viruses could survive at that temperature. To this day, Minnesotans and countless other Americans keep that tradition alive. Every time we've bought a house, we've always uh, made sure there's a spot to put a sauna. Darren and Suzanne Young can't imagine a home without one. We had a little village here at one time. There were a lot of saunas, but now we're down to, yeah, one outside and one, <laughs> one inside. Darren builds them any way he can, like this one. A uh, co-worker, it was his uh, junior high playhouse. And then I uh, bought it from them to convert it into a sauna. I think the most we've ever had is four, but I think you probably could, you could maybe squeeze five or six. I made the stove. It was a tent stove for a big old wall tent. It's fun for me to see him get excited about saunas. We got the door at a garage sale. I think the door is one of the coolest things. He enjoys them a lot. <laughs> it, it actually it relaxes me a lot because I usually a person that doesn't relax a whole lot and I usually spend an hour in there and I come inside and it's a, you're a bit of a different person I think. It's more about peace of mind and it's really cool to see now in this year and in this era that sound is being kind of proclaimed as a real deal and something health-wise we should do. Winter is the gloomy time of the year, and the sauna is the one bright spot. Oh, it's awesome. Take a few deep breaths and kind of shut everything off for a while. A cleanse of both mind and spirit. 
you will never find peace and tranquility in Minnesota's winter like you can with the sound. Try and keep your arm completely straight. Coming up, the lumberjack lifestyle hits the local pub. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Rapala, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Ice Castle Fish House and RV. A typical lumberjack is known as a big, burly, strong man who braves the environment. But now, you don't have to be any of those things to test your lumberjack skills. If you're looking for a way to stay entertained, pick up an axe, just like our Viking ancestors did years ago. Basically, you know, axe throwing originated uh, in Norway, probably back in the old Viking days. They're basically just looking to pass the time, get over the winter months, kind of hone their skills. Now you too can pass time with an ancient timber sport called bad axe throwing. We've currently got 10 lanes. This is the largest location. We've actually also got the largest, largest league uh, for bad axe throwing uh, for worldwide, actually. And 15th is Angela Holiday with 280. Considering our deep-rooted Norwegian heritage in Minnesota, it didn't take long for folks to show up. And if our ancestors did it, it must come naturally, right? We've had people that uh, it'll take them, you know, one throw to get it. They'll get it on their first try. We've had people that'll maybe it'll take them out an hour to get it. I'd like to give it a go? All right. We got uh, 13 axe coaches here. You're going to try and keep your arm completely straight. Uh, we'll teach you how to throw. We got a few different throws, and we'll teach you the basics of what you need. Would have been a winner. Uh, as long as you get that momentum between you and the target with that one rotation, it's it's gonna stick fairly easy. All right, it's getting closer. I mean, for the record, it did go there. It just didn't stick. You get ten throws. The bullseyes were six, and then it goes out to four, then three, two, one. And then on the last throw, there's two goo dots that were 10 points, so the most points you can get in a game is 64. So, first place currently, Phil with 728. Woo! It's more than just points that keep people coming back for more. I think there's the uh, kind of white Vikings aspect of it, too. I mean, that's kind of cool to, to throw axes. I was gonna say it's like really manly, but I don't know. There's a lot of, there's actually as many women here throwing as there are guys. No gender has an advantage. Maybe that's the draw, or? It's, it's a lot of fun. It's nothing like a team competitive or anything. It's a really nice, actually kind of relaxing, almost therapeutic in a sense. Twirling axes through the air is therapy? I guess for some, but others, it's getting in touch with that inner Viking. It's something that I've been doing for years. I started a long time ago because uh, I'm very Norwegian, which is, you know, very typical of Minnesota. And new friendships. Especially with our community that we've built, everyone's starting to become friends. We're creating new social groups. Maybe our ancestors began throwing axes as a way to make new friends. I think that sounds right on target. Yay! There we go, oh, nice. There we go. Whose league am I gonna join? Hey everybody, Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. I think it was singer Greg Brown that said it best. All I need is gunpowder tea, a copper teapot, and a good sharp knife. Yes, having sharp gear when you're out in the woods is very important 
It's also a safety thing. Dull tools tend to get people hurt. So I wanna show you what my kit looks like. It's very simple and it goes many of the places I go in the woods. I just have a pouch and inside it, a simple sharpening stone. Half is fine, the other side, coarse for uh, cleaning up big dings. And then I keep a little tin of synthetic oil with me as a lubricant. So when I'm done filleting my walleyes and I wanna just touch up my knife, it's really a simple process. All I do is dab a couple of drops of oil on that stone and then work both sides in a circular motion. There we go. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute. That is good and ready to go. Clean that oil off and I'm ready for my next project. Think about a little sharpening stone and keep it in your kit when you're outdoors. It is good to maintain your gear and keep it effective and ready for your projects. Still ahead, we help you forget about all our snow and cold, <laughs> at least for a couple of minutes. But first, an Italian dish whipped up with your favorite wild game. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. Everybody. Today we're getting wild in the kitchen, in fact, in my kitchen. On the menu, we are making venison pizza casserole, otherwise known as hot dish here in the Midwest, right? Well, the twist with this one is we're going to be using zucchini instead of noodles today, so we're going to get started. First step is shredding zucchini. I like to use a food processor for this. Of course, you can hand chop the zucchini, but the food processor is much faster. And we want to keep shredding the zucchini until we have approximately four cups. This is a great way to sneak in vegetables for those picky eaters in your house as well. We're going to add about a teaspoon of salt to the zucchini because we want to get rid of some of the moisture in it. So we're going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. While our zucchini is resting, we're going to take the time to chop up a red and green pepper for the topping. Next, we need to chop some onion. Veggies are chopped, our zucchini had time to rest for 10 minutes, and now we're going to squeeze the moisture out of the zucchini. So I take a little handful and give it a good squeeze. And place it in another mixing bowl. All right, next step is we're gonna add a couple of eggs to our rinsed zucchini. Next, you wanna add about three quarters cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I like to add a little bit of either Italian seasoning or pizza seasoning I have here. And last, just an extra pinch of salt. And you just stir this together and this will actually become the dough of our pizza. Next, you just wanna take a nine by 13 baking dish and uh, place our zucchini mixture into the baking dish. So our zucchini pizza casserole crust is gonna go into the oven first for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. While the zucchini's in the oven, it's time to brown our venison. First step is to saute the onion. And one thing you wanna do with the onion is just sweat the onion or cook it until it's translucent. You don't want to brown the onion because it'll overcook. So it looks like our venison is ready to go here. Our venison is nice and brown. Um, we're gonna add in our pizza sauce, approximately uh, 15 ounces, which is about three quarters of a cup. Look at this crust, delicious. Venison is browned and our crust is done, so it's time to assemble our pizza casserole. Now it's time for the good part. We're going to add some cheddar cheese and mozzarella cheese to the top. A little extra, never hurt anybody, did it? 
A good pizza needs a lot of cheese. And last step, to sneak in a few more veggies, we're going to top it with some red and green pepper. Back in the oven it goes for another 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, it's time to peek at our casserole. Oh yes. So here you go, venison pizza casserole. It's perfect if you're following a gluten-free diet, if you're following a low-carb diet, and it's also wildly delicious if you're following no diet at all. Mm -mm -mm. Hi, I'm Sue Barnes from Mighty Dog, pro staffer for Native Performance Dog Food, here to give you this week's tip about obedience with your hunting dog. When you bring that dog home and you have a lot of questions about how to get your dog started, there's a lot of resources out there. It might be your professional trainer in your area, it might be a book, but the biggest thing you want to do is socialize that dog, get him into a puppy class, or get him out there with someone that can help you achieve the goals that you have for your dog. My belief is the sooner you start obedience, the better your dog is going to be. We want a well-balanced dog that understands what we want. So if you start a dog from the very beginning on things like sit, come, and how to behave in the house, you're going to have a dog that's a great partner in the field as well as at home. Good boy. Good boy. Starting those basic obedience commands from the moment that dog comes home is going to give you a dog that you can enjoy from day one for many years to come. <laughs> Straight ahead, we go back in time as Ron Shera gets away from the snow and cold to try and bend a rod. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Hewitt Docks, Lifts, and Pontoon Lakes. Leech Lake Area Tourism. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes your father south, way south. To the Florida Keys long ago where he got hooked on saltwater fishing. To sport anglers, this is a fishy paradise, Florida's saltwater flats. Miles of shallow aqua blue water where fishing is more like hunting. From an elevated skiff, angler and guide glide over a giant aquarium where almost Ms. anything Pauline can swim by. From giant rays to toothy barracuda to the elusive but beautiful permit, one of the most prized fish on the flats. Veteran guide Captain Von Cochran and Ernest Hemingway lookalike pulls the flats around Key West, ironically not far from the famed author's historic home. To Cochran, a day of fishing on the flats usually includes a surprise. On one of my last casts, the guide's prediction came true. <laughs> oh, golly. It was a fish, but what? Yeah, it's big something. We don't know what it is. Quickly, we realized we were trying to land a fish we really didn't want in the boat. Is it a shark? Yeah. Black tip shark? Yep. Now what do we do, huh? What do we do? Whatever the shark wants to do. He's no little guy either. No, he's not. This black tip shark was acting like its next stop was Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, a shark this size, 50 pounds or more, raises the question of catch and release. Like how? The answer, very carefully. You got one hook loose. Yep. Look at those teeth. Look at those teeth. Oh, man, look at those teeth. Hey, good job. Right. There he goes. <laughs> That's another lesson from shark fishing. When it swims free, you're glad it's the fish that got away. Oh, I wish I was there this time of year. I know. Ron used to get all the good assignments. <laughs> Didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.